సార్ లైవ్ స్టార్ట్ అయింది సార్ ఇంకా మీరు ఇంట్రొడ్యూస్ చేయండి నేను బిగిన్ చేస్తాను యా గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ ఎవ్రీవన్ we welcome all the esteemed audience across the world to the india's largest online cultural festival surabi 2020 so surabi 2020 has recorded to be the india's largest online festival with around 21116 participants who are participating from 20 states and four union territories the competitions are conducted in 36 categories spanning around dance art drama literary and various categories the <coughs> events happened from the past two weeks and we are, we have witnessed the diaspora of participants and a spectrum of enthusiastic talents who have joined from across the country indeed the enthusiastic participants even in this pandemic situation had made surabi a grand success and had engaged we are very proud that it had engaged lot many and thousands of youth across the country in serving the great tangible and intangible cultural heritage of india so as a part of surabi surabi is an initi- is an annual cultural festival of kl university so under the able direction of the honorable honorable president klf శ్రీ కోని సత్యనారాయణ గారు ఆనరబుల్ సెక్రటరీ కేలిఎఫ్ శ్రీమతి కోనేరు కాంచన లత గారు ఆనరబుల్ వైస్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ కేలిఎఫ్ శ్రీ కోనేరు లక్ష్మణ హవీష్ గారు ఆనరబుల్ వైస్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ కేలిఎఫ్ శ్రీ కోనేరు రాజా హరిన్ గారు అండ్ ద వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ కేలిఎఫ్ ఎల్ఎస్ఎస్ రెడ్డి గారు సురభి హ్యాస్ బికమ్ ఏ వండర్ఫుల్ ఈవెంట్ విత్ వైడ్ వెరైటీ ఆఫ్ ఈవెంట్స్ సో ద వెరైటీ ఆఫ్ ఈవెంట్స్ ఇన్ సురభి కన్సిస్ట్ ఆఫ్ కాంపిటీషన్స్ వర్క్ షాప్స్ salam surabi special art shows by the legendary dancers artists <coughs> across the country so we have witnessed and as a part of surabi sugrama so we have taken up the initiative to, to highlight the folklores of india and we have showcased the wonderful folk art forms of andhra pradesh to the world the folk art forms of andhra pradesh like garagalu of east godavari to we have showed the garagalu of east godavari to the world uh, last week and we had showcased the yakshagana of karnataka to the world and we are going to showcase the leather puppetry tolu bommalata of andhra pradesh tomorrow and many more dance forms yet to come in the line through the theme surabi sugrama so as a part of experience the enticing india india a proud nation with a grand tangible and intangible cultural heritage which dates back to many thousands of years is the home for the great history in the words of mark twain a great american philosopher he has said that india is the grand great grandmother of legend and history so now so we want to showcase and present the grand history of india to the present younger generation especially to the youth so we in the in the the youth with lot of interest in science maths physics and in, the, in uh, steering in technology we are forgetting our past as said by the german, german philosopher twain b those generations who can't understand or know the past can't build great future so we on the edge of cre- creating a greater future for our beloved nation india so we people across the different states and union territories so we need to know the grand heritage of india unfortunately our history is untold many stories are unsung and many heroes are unsung so we are through this surabi is taking a grand chance by the blessings of god and many eminent personalities like dr sevanag reddy garu who is going to the speaker today so we are trying to present the unforgotten history the untold history to the present generations so with the theme stones speak stones are non living things how do they can speak speak yes they can speak if they they see the grand inheritors and the grand professors of cultural heritage like dr sevanag reddy garu so sevanag reddy garu can make stone speak can teach us 
the untold stories <coughs> that have buried in the great legacy of time so right now today so we are going to have a profound and a very interesting <coughs> enchanting session by dr emani sivanareddy garu chief executive officer culture center of vijayawada amravati telling us the untold tales making us know the unsung heroes so now i take the great privilege of welcome to the, the stone speak workshop show sir thank you very much for sparing your valuable time to enlighten all the youth along with us on the grand tangible and intangible cultural heritage of india so we thank sevana reddy sir and now indeed it's my grand great privilege to introduce dr sevana reddy emani to all the audience across the india and many audience across the world who are showing the, who are seeing this live sevana reddy emani born on 15th april 1955 at valiveru in chundur mandal guntur district is an agricultural family underwent a four year training in traditional sculpture and architecture from sv institute for traditional sculpture and architecture tdd tirupati took master of arts degree in ancient indian history culture and archaeology from osman university awarded the degree of doctor of philosophy phd in history from hyderabad central university dr reddy also took postgraduate degrees with master of tourism management mtm and executive master of business administration from mk university and ms university respectively joined government service in 1978 in endomis department <coughs> and moved to the department of archaeology and museums government of andhra pradesh in 1979 successfully transplanted more than 100 temples built between 7th to 17th century ad which were threatened submergence of srisailam reservoir and built more than 500 new temples all over andhra pradesh as per the silpa and agama shastras participated in many archaeological excavations at a good number of buddhist sites in andhra pradesh conferred with the title vastu vastu silpa vachaspati by vastu vignani dr v ganapati stapati <laughs> professor reddy spoke on art architecture of the telugu people at the first world telugu history congress scheduled on 14th 15th july 2012 at london organized by uktta he also visited important buddhist sites and monuments in sri lanka professor Sir reddy served at national institute of tourism and hospitality management gachboli as senior faculty and dean school of travel and tourism of many state universities dr reddy after his retirement from the department of archaeology and museums in 2013 april joined in aptdc and then as director of state gallery of art madhapur hyderabad till may 2014 he again joined aptdc as osd officer and special duty art and culture holding full additional charge to silpa ramams ap and dr reddy is the key architect behind unfolding the grand cultural silpa ramam hyderabad dr reddy is chairman board of studies department of travel and tourism vikram simhapuri university nellore ap and member board of studies department of ancient indian history culture and archaeology sv university tirupati and department of management and tourism acharya naga university guntur he is on a panel of experts amravati capital building apcrda professor sivanagreddy wrote and edited many books nearing to 80 books and 500 articles on history culture archaeology buddhism and tourism currently working as chief executive officer <coughs> the culture center of vijayawada amravati mahalakshmi group of companies madhu mahalakshmi chambers vijayawada dr sivanagreddy sir has never taken a single day leave or has never let a second go wasted without serving the grand cultural heritage of india so with the, with this short introduction <coughs> we, we found ourselves very privileged and blessed to have dr sivana reddy garu to deliver a wonderful address on the theme stones speak i now on behalf of the chairman surabhi dr habulla khan advisor student affairs kl university convener Surabhi, Dr. M. Suman, I now welcome Dr. Simna Reddy Garu to address the gathering across the world and across the 20 states and four union territories regarding the theme Stone Speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Fargo. It is uh, I feel it is a privilege to be invited for <coughs> on the series. And uh, again, I I would also like to. Uh, welcome all the participants for my talk stone speak they speak stories many stories not one story and they speak certain times the stories that are connected to not the locality but even supra local and national international also when we go to prehistoric thing it would be uh, international 
and uh, <clears throat> when we speak something on local it will be local history like that the talk would be it begins with uh, uh, prehistoric times and uh, ends with 18th century ad but it is not in continuity sometimes it may be fragmented segmented or it may be disjointed also but my aim is this is only to speak how uh, <clears throat> whenever we visit certain remote areas or villages or certain pilgrimage centers there will be some unnoticed uh, iconic stones those stones may be sometimes sculptures inscriptions are neglected parts of architectural members of temples or its adjuncts so this is uh, how the uh, talk is structured let me begin with what we call <clears throat> yes stone speak i begin with the stone it is all it is not a stone but it is stone it is called as fossil it is a wooden fossil or wood fossil dated around 5 lakh years bc very recently discovered by us at kokatrapalli in ungur uh, prakashan district so this is really more than a meter in length and 30 cm in width and uh, 15 cm in thickness so this all of a sudden we encountered when we were going for survey in the area in search of buddhist and uh, archaeological remains so as soon as i saw it what happened was in each and every village every house of the village kokatrapalli everybody has a piece at least uh, some six in the side stone uh, of wooden fossil in each and every house they really don't know that uh, the stones date to 5 lakh years 4 lakh years like that so after i visit that place i sensitize the locals that please don't make into pieces they are actually making pieces whenever they want they break it into two into three and use for domestic purposes then i sensitized them on the antiquity of these stones which speak really the story of 5 lakh years of the human past in this uh, part of the country then they really raised their eyebrows oh we really don't know you please come you please come they showed me what to call a heap of uh, fossils so that is the story begins next there are many such a wooden fossils uh, across the state particularly forested zone and whenever uh, i my sincere request to all the student participants particularly to to please take note uh, of the importance of such stones which are neglected marginalized even uh, to take care and preserve them for posterity then my request again is whenever you come across any sculpture any inscription which is uh, what to call neglected or uh, uh, grown with uh, jungle then please remove that one at least keep it safely <coughs> tell one or two uh, local people they will protect it now this is uh, about what we call fossil and other remains the, the story of the human past begins with what we call the paleolithic age which again is divided into lower paleolithic middle paleolithic and upper paleolithic like many many some uh, terminologies are there but anyhow we confine only to prehistory that is which has no written records then it has also its own history but how to know it it is purely based on the relics of the past what are those relics those relics are in two types one is what we call the implement stone implements that they have left and on the other hand from the mesolithic to late mesolithic times onwards people have started uh, depicting art whatever they have seen whatever uh, and they have what we call come across in their daily, daily routine they started actually painting on the rock shelters and uh, inside the caves sometimes these rock shelters are open sometimes subterranean so they started painting whatever they have seen whether it is just to call out from their memory or to educate the next generation here is a best example in karnul district of andhra pradesh we have a place called ketavaram ketavaram is actually some 3 kilometers from karnul to nandiyala uh, road but uh, such cave sites with rock art we have at more than 40 sites in andhra pradesh 
This is one example very close to Ketavaram and dated around, it ranges in date between uh, 6000 BC to 1500 BC. So uh, the varieties of things are there. They were done over a period of time using natural uh, uh, pigments and uh, red, uh, what we call is that red oxide was done. So natural these things. So this, what I mean to say here is, during the Mesolithic time and the post Mesolithic time, people started living under the rock shelters, natural rock shelters. You can see a man standing from him, the, uh, the entire is a rock shelter. In the rock shelter, they really painted and you can see the paintings on this side. Sometimes these are antelopes, sometimes are bulls, sometimes are um, uh, all uh, such types of the animals are there. So this is the real story of uh, documenting the history of the past by the primitive people. It is very interesting. Now, even we know, uh, even we know many uh, uh, stories, etc. We don't document them. We just consume and leave it like that. But these people, they have left us indelible uh, source material that is rock paintings. This is the very first story. The story can go there, how they lived, what are the uh, themes that they have depicted, varieties of uh, the environment ecology has been depicted in the scene and whatever they have hunted, uh, etc. So this is the very first one, rock shelter of the prehistoric times. And uh, the importance is that rock art, for the first time, people started documenting their own history. But we have a criticism that India never cared for documenting its history. It is not true. Of course, it may be true in medieval periods, etc. But what happens is, during the prehistoric times, we have such evidences in plenty. Next is that the next period, what we call after the Mesolithic period, we have uh, the period categorized as Neolithic, what is new stone age tools, the stone age tools which are grounded, polished, and made with the smooth surface of the cutting edge so that it will um, save the time and it can be very useful for the Neolithic people, that is new stone age people dated between uh, 4000 BC to uh, around 1750 BC. This is a Neolithic tool of 11 inches in length and 3 inches in width uh, with a medial rib. This very practically they have prepared it, but this we really collected from Kodavati Kallu in Nandigam, Nandigam Taluk of Krishna district on the riverside village. It is a riverside village. So whenever you go to certain remote areas, you please locate or inquire with the local people that do you come across any prehistoric stone tools or Neolithic tools so that without uh, what we call uh, getting them uh, neglected or uh, damaged, we can safeguard them in the local schools or in the panchayat offices or they could be handed over to the State Department of Archaeology for display in all their museums. So this lady, now you are uh, seeing uh, that lady, when she was busily involved in uh, removing the weed in her uh, uh, fields, she automatically come across with the sickle. So she uh, got it out. Then she immediately rang me up uh, some of the uh, people. I noticed it that this is Neolithic and I sensitized them by visiting that village so that uh, they cannot be simply thrown away. So this is a Neolithic stone. So you can see that 11 inch stone, it speaks, what does it speak? It speaks what we call the greatest revolution in the history of the mankind that is Neolithic revolution in which man started at settling at one place in which man started domestication of animals, in which man started agriculture also. Many more things is there and the wild pottery, etc. So the real life began during the Neolithic times. This is uh, the best evidence. Next, yes. Now you are looking at a very huge stone planted. It is not natural. It was uh, extracted from some nearby and then transported and dug out a pit then erected, filled the pit at the foot of the, uh, in the, what we call, uh, in the base of the stone, so to give firm grip. So what does it mean? 
it is again 14 feet in height, then 3 feet 3 inches in weight, and only 6 inches in uh, thickness. This is what we call Palnado limestone. On the stone, we find certain graffiti or what we call bruising, rock bruising of the Iron Age. What does it mean? Iron Age means for the first time, people in invented metallurgy, then uh, they have also made uh, many domestic implements and offense and defense varieties of iron uh, was profusely used for all sorts of uh, uh, works. It made their, their life very easy. Then uh, this is uh, uh, around 1500 BC to 500 BC it continued in this part of the country. And what is what does it mean? Yes, this is a, this is called Menhir. Menhir is a huge stone planted to denote there lies a burial. Burial of whom might be uh, a big wig or a chieftain. Hello? Then uh, the, what happened was the local people were about to uh, remove it by breaking it. Then uh, I was there. I asked them, why are you breaking it? No, no, we have developed it into layout of uh, plots. We want to sell them in real estate business. No, no, no. I requested them. I begged them, please at least leave a small space all around so that it stands as what we call testimonial to the history of the past of this region. And they asked me, why? Why are you so, so much concerned about this? Then I said, this is dated to, uh, this is, uh, do you know the age of it? No, we don't know, they said. Then I said, this is 3,500 years old. Oh, my dear. Then we will leave it and we preserve it for posterity. Then that is the way in which the local people or villagers are very kind-hearted. They really uh, do, what we call donated to the society in that particular area. Now it is still standing. Many research scholars will visit it. This is uh, not a new discovery. It has been since uh, the Iron Age and uh, people like Robert uh, Robert Civil in as early as 1893 and 94. He has documented in his book, uh, List of Antiquarian Remains in Madras Presidency. That is the thing. This is the beauty of the stone. You, uh, for the commoners, it just looks like a, an ordinary stone. So, my dear uh, student participants, please note, if you come across such a huge stones planted there, please uh, um, uh, uh, pay a little bit of attention to it, then you know the history of it and contribute yourself for its preservation. Next is, yes, whenever we go to villages, what happens was there lies a temple on the back side of uh, this thing. So that uh, temple was built very recently in um, 1800 AD by Raja Vasudev Venkatagir Naidu. It was dedicated to Venkateshwara at a place called Kotla uh, Gudim. It is exactly on the uh, right bank of River Krishna in Achampet, Taluk of Kuntu district. Then what happened, they really don't know. There lies a, an ancient Buddhist site of 2000 years old. But uh, by 1800 AD, they really do not know that these belong to a Buddhist uh, site or settlement. There is an inscription also. And uh, the inscription was again uh, engraved in 1290, denoting that Ra Rani Rudramadevi, the queen of Kakataya Empress, uh, she, she died. And uh, to commemorate that event, there is an inscription. So this happened over a period of time with a little bit of ignorance or without the knowledge of passing to the next generation what happened in the past. So it happens uh, almost uh, in... So this, since I have got a little bit of knowledge in identifying the stones, this is a Buddhist monument of first century AD on which 13th century AD inscription was there. Apart from that, these pillars were used to raise a temple in 18th century AD. So this was appropriated by um, people in two uh, contexts. So this is uh, how I want. You, whenever you come across any limestone, Palnadu limestone, then it is covered with half medallion, half uh, lotus medallions or any Buddhist symbols. Please uh, take uh, some precautions to preserve it for posterity. Yes, 
this is a very interesting story what is what is the story the story is that there is a place called chandavaram in again prakasham district uh, i on the route to tripurantakam temple from guntur but what happens was there is a beautiful the biggest south indian stupa biggest datable to second century bc and continued up to fourth century ad excavations were uh, conducted there but in spite of that what happens before the excavations conducted by department of archaeology the locals removed the sculptural panels i think the visitors are viewing at uh, dharma chakra stupa all the uh, bodhi vruksha all are there these are panels used as basement for the shiva temple called mahabaleshwara when did it happen it happened hardly 100 years ago so then i went sensitized the people they said it is our sentiment now we cannot remove so what can we do we cannot um, uh, force them but at least i asked them it is very easy since it is only the mandapa not the main temple you can remove the wall on the top of the panel and these panels date to second century first century bc why can't we uh, start uh, protect them so this is again a story like that you can go you can make uh, interesting observation you can write down and uh, what to call publicize for sensitizing the people so that such neglect could be prevented this is a very interesting story next yes another story this is at a place called siddhantam near gudiwada in uh, west godavari district what happened was we were searching for uh, uh, again going for uh, uh, archaeological uh, explorations all of us and what happened we saw a man sitting on a stool this was arranged like a stool and he was uh, sitting on it and reading news papers every day so comfortably in the morning then we we uh, we have got a little doubt that uh, seeing on the limestone it might be some antiquity we requested them can you please get up he stood and uh, whatever happens is we requested him sir can we uh, examine it yes he permitted us then we said there is an inscription this is what we call identification of such things is very important this is the umbrella what we call the chhatra the top most pedestal which is decorated on the top of a buddhist stupa this is again dated to ekshwaku period the 3rd century ad so we re uh, we requested him sir this is 3rd century ad you are using it to every day you are sitting it so comfortably we are sorry to request you please sacrifice your comfort so that we can sh shift these this important antiquity to ghantasala buddhist museum he is very kind enough then we immediately shifted it to ghantasala buddhist museum can you see a small one page story could be written on this and the little bit of ignorance um, make these things permanently ignored by the next generation if we have got a little bit of what to call uh, identification skill this could be uh, saved now it is saved so uh, uh, people are using them not wantonly not deliberately but they really don't know the importance and uh, for what purpose it was used in the past so this is a lack of awareness uh, we want to create that awareness in the remote areas yes again here lies again another story what is this these are again buddhist uh, panels of dharma chakra and dharma chakra vandana that is what is dharma chakra buddha uh, siddhartha after uh, attaining the enlightenment he is called as buddha and his very first speech through his experience what he said was those four noble truths etc ram i am not going to speak on this but this is known as dharma chakra his first speech was known as dharma chakra pravartanam and it is commemorated uh, perpetually by the people uh, carving a dharma chakra you can see na these two panels were found in the what to call uh, in gondlakamma river in prakasham district how this is also accidental people and uh, they were actually during the midnight they were uh, uh, taking sand for uh, sand mining they came along with one tractor this tractor uh, one, one of the tires of this tractor struck uh, in between these two panels if they couldn't even uh, get it uh, out so early in the morning when they want to remove uh, or when uh, they want to 
and take the tractor out from this thing, they found sculptures. They immediately rang us. Then I said that this is first century BC uh, um, Buddhist pillar. So they, what they did was, no, 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 we are not bothered all these things. They just went away. So you see how things will come or how things will surface. This is an accidental thing. And here lies a small story. First century BC, then Dharma Chakra. Dharma Chakra means Buddha's first discourse. And the art, the early phase of Amaravati art, you can see the Buddha's Vajrasana, Dharma Chakra, pillar, and how people are there. Then you can see, uh, you can estimate the lifestyle of uh, the uh, 2200 years old of Andhra Pradesh. Yes. Now, again, what happened was, in my recent trip to Guntur, old Guntur, I went on uh, Naga Panchami. I went to a temple, local temple. People were in queue. They are not allowing me to go up to the Naga. But uh, from the other side, I came and saw, this is really not, this is Naga, no doubt, but not Naga of the Hindu pantheon. This is Muzulinda Naga of the Buddhist pantheon. You can see this is 3rd century AD. What uh, Muzulinda Naga? Muzulinda Naga was uh, a Naga who protected with, with his uh, hoods when there was a uh, rain, heavy rain, when Buddha, uh, Siddhartha was contemplating deep meditation. So, <coughs> Uh, to respect that event, the Buddhist sculptors started carving Naga Muchulinda, not connected to Nagula Panchami, Nagula Savitri, or the Hindu pantheon, but this is Buddhist. They really don't know. It is erected in Agasteshwara temple, and thousands of people pour liters of milk on it uh, during the Naga Panchami day. When I said, they said, no, 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 we have been uh, habituated to do this thing. So this is again a story how with the ignorance, people worship non-cult objects of their own religion in which they have great belief. They believe that this is Hindu or Brahmanical, but it is not. So we have to sensitize without hurting the feelings of the locals that it's on its date or antiquity, then on its importance, uh, and again, its connection to the historical or history of art. Then just they will start. Uh, first, we have to sensitize the priests. Then they will, they keep very silent. Slowly, uh, through press, I could uh, sensitize the local people. Yes, again, in Vijayawada, Gunadala is known as Gunadala Mary Mata Shrine, Vijayawada. Then what happened was, uh, the tall man, uh, one, two, three, four, na, the fourth one from the lady, he is a tall man, he is a local MLA, uh, Sri... Uh, uh, he is Ram Mohan Rao, Ram Mohan Rao Garu. Gadya Ram Mohan Rao Garu is local MLA. All of a sudden, he rang me up that there is a cave. Can you come and notice it? Then immediately I rushed there. It, it is being called as Kanakadurkoma temple. It is not Kanakadurka temple. It is a first century BC Buddhist cave used as rainy retreat. During the rainy season, Buddha said, Please don't move. My Buddha said to all the monks, please don't move. Stay at one place and you collect arms from there only. Then they, that is known as rainy retreat, vasa vasa. Then such rainy retreat, when Buddhism declined, the other uh, people of other religion occupied it and continued as to Kanakadurga temple. There is no idol as such, but it is called during Dasara, they conduct certain uh, worship, etc. So when I sensitized that this belongs to Buddhism, they said the locals know we really don't know what Buddhism is, but it has been uh, under worship for the for, for few generations. We continue to do the same. But anyhow, the great thing is that they are preserving and um, protecting it, not the government. So, uh, the thing is that they are whitewashing deliberately every year. So I said at least to stop whitewashing from this year onwards, they didn't do this time but it came to the notice of the archaeology department, they may further protect it. Yes, again, this is a stone. This stone, you really don't know. This stone was actually used as, uh, used as uh, a washing uh, stone. People, uh, what we call washing the clothes, but uh, what happened was during the survey, some archaeologists have noticed there is some sculpture. 
then he tilted the stone all of a sudden uh, he astonished that this belongs to third fourth century ad it is very interesting na this is from kondamotu near pidugurala in palnadu area of krishna guntur district very interesting the stone was upside down people were using just to wash their clothes but all of a sudden when it is uh, uh, turned out upside down uh, we noticed it very interesting and in historical context in between you can see the central figure is lord narsimham as early as 4th century it is in zoomorphic form the entire body is in uh, uh, zoo in the sense of animal but the hands are man so we call it as zoomorphic next to it are panchaviras that is uh, krishna vasudeva anuruddha balarama like that so this is a very interesting rarest panel of panchavira cult with uh, narsimha as the avatar in as early as 4th century ad this is from andhra pradesh it has got into many historical writings so the here, here also lies stories what story the stories it was used as uh, washing the clothes then the it depicts the wonderful bhagavata theme that is panchavira cult so and the earliest stone of lord narsimha yes here comes a 4th century ad cave near vijayawada on the right bank of river krishna we have a cave structure this which has four stories no where in entire indian context you have four stories we have only three stories in ajanta and other parts of the country but this is this has four stories this was also a buddhist cave later day appropriated and now it is called as ananta seena guha so like that uh, stories happen it was again excavated in first century ad but later uh, uh, modifications were done in fourth century ad in sixth century ad uh, sculptures of what to call bhagavata ramayana were carved on the pillars and uh, walls but uh, in the second story there was actually a buddha in reclining posture that is mahaparinirvana that has been converted into ananta seena and there is an inscription also of 14th century ad anavema reddy's time that uh, a, a, a a few acres of land was donated for the maintenance of ananta seena temple which was really not ananta seena temple so like that we can create a, not to spin over a story we can write a story the art we can sensitize the local people the original history like this but uh, it underwent many changes over the period of time and we have to respect the uh, theory of change change is the law of life similarly monuments are no exception though it is a first century bc cave and modified in fourth and sixth century and continued to be a result of other religion brahmanical religion from 6 to 7 and in 14th century it became a ananta seena temple pure hindu temple like that a wonderful story my i request all the participants we have no right to hurt the feelings of others but uh, we sensibly sensitize the people around the monument so that they know the historical importance of the monument and uh, preserve them for posterity you see it is again in palnadu area how pathetically they are left on care every day the priest used to come open the temples this is what you call rameshwara temple then what happens there are valuable sculptures of mahishasura mardani of the 5th 6th century ad ganesha of 8th century ad and here you can see valli and subramanya you can also see some of the uh, surya of uh, 7th century ad so most of the sculptures were left uncared and people they don't bother because it is not uh, in worship but uh, as far as the uh, archaeologists and historians are concerned such stones speak uh, volumes of uh, stories on mythology stories on history art history what not so this is very important whenever you go to uh, temples if you notice that there are certain sculptures uh, uh, what we call neglected please please uh, keep them in at least state order and shift them to the wall side so that they will be visible to the others here for the first time we come across uh, 
a portrait or a, a, a sculpture of a king, Jai Simha the first is Yuvan Bhagat Polakesi the second. Polakesi second, the brother of Jai Vishnu Vardhana, who established the Eastern Chinese dynasty. Then, after that, what happened? Uh, his son was Jai Simha, who really uh, consolidated the Eastern Chalukyan kingdom. He ruled from 642 AD to 673 AD. He, for the first time, started building temples on large scale. This is a temple at Pondugula near Gurujala, but uh, he, uh, his, his uh, sculpture is found. Very interesting. So, uh, most of the people think that this is a god. It is not god, it is a human, it is of a royal uh, personality, Jai Simha the first. But it has to be properly erected. There shall be a signage for the people uh, for self-explanation. Yes, again, it is very interesting. In Machal area, there is a KCP cement factory. Uh, all the waste water of the cement factory comes into a tank. And that tank with the waste, um, what we call, silted up, 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 and uh, it came up to the roof level of a 7th century AD temple. This temple is locally called as Ruplama temple, but this is very interesting. The architecture resembles to the temples of uh, Aihole, Badame, and Patta, Pattadakal in Karnataka, because the Western Chalukyan architecture, uh, what we call, they have adapted in this part of the country also because it was under their control. So here, what I mean to say is, in Andhra, it is a new and foreign uh, uh, form of architecture. In spite of that, what happened, it was concealed up to roof level. Uh, some 13 feet is buried in the silt of the tank. Now, uh, we have to uh, remove the silt or transplant the entire temple to a higher contour. Like that, there are certain stories. Yes, it is again in Madula, but in same uh, uh, Gurujala Mandal of Buntu district. This is again a new. What happened? We are accustomed only to visit to temples of Rama, temples of Vishnu, temples of Shiva, temples of Subramanya, uh, or uh, Ganesha, or Amavaru Sekti, etc. But we are not accustomed to visit temples of Buddhists and Jains. They, they are also religions uh, whom many people will respect it. But here, what happened was, um, they, it was lying in a temple, but uh, some people have thrown it away in the, uh, what we call in the dump yard. This is Vardhamana Mahavira, the 24th Tirthankara of the Jain Pantheon, and the sculpture based on its style is dated to 9th century AD, but uh, since it is broken at the head portion, it was left uncared. Every day people used to throw dump on his face. So is it uh, respecting our um, history? No. I went there, the, uh, collected the people of four or five neighboring uh, huts. I requested them, please treat it as God. They stopped dumping on the sculpture. Yes, again, Vijayawada, near Vijayawada, we have got a wonderful Jain cave of Svetambara sect, datable to 8th century AD. It is very interesting. Just outskirts of Vijayawada. Both people won't go. Every day, lakhs of people will go to uh, Kankadurga temple. It is our duty, at least, to respect our heritage. And uh, we cannot drive all the 10,000 or 20,000, but people who are interested in uh, appreciating heritage could be taken to this area. This is a very interesting at Ambapuram. A little trek of half a kilometer really make you a yeah, wonderful, uh, what you call, uh, enjoyment of uh, picturesque locality. Yes, very rarest sculpture. What does it mean? It is simply, if we look at it, it is a, 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 a slab of a stone. But uh, on the slab of the stone, we come across uh, Sahasraling. We have Sahasraling'a, uh, thousand Linga's uh, sculptures are there. We are accustomed, we worship also. But on the other hand, there is a very rare sculpture of thousand Nagas. But here on this panel, 689 sculptures are there depicting Nagas on it. And Nagula Chavati, people throng around it. Many it is in Velpuru, again in Guntu district. Um, it is a very uh, rare thing, unique thing, and uh, 
I wanted to publicize it through press. I did it. And most of the people started visiting this particular uh, very important, unique uh, 11th century AD 1000 Naga sculpture. Only one of its kind in entire what to call entire South India. Yes, again, Dwarapala of Vijayawada. This is very famous. Why it is famous? Simply, it looks like any Dwarapala. No, it has unique features of, uh, you can see that uh, teeth, very uh, lengthy teeth, then the ornamentation is totally different. This wonderful sculpture dated to 9th, 10th century AD was recovered when the um, Praka, what we call uh, an Anakat barrage was built across the River Krishna as early as in 1845, uh, uh, canals were also dug. From the Elur Canal, when the Elur Canal was uh, being excavated, two such beautiful Dwarapala sculptures were recovered, 10th century AD. This sculpture, what uh, now we are looking at, is now in Chennai Museum. So it has a wonderful history. The history is that not the antiquity, but how it is retrieved. It was retrieved while digging a canal from Vijayawada to Elur, which is known as Elur Canal. Then it was shifted uh, to the local collector's bungalow. Then it was again shifted to Masli Patnam. And in 1941, it was sent to Chennai Egmore Museum. So the, the entire story can be interestingly told to the students so that they can pay a little bit of attention on knowing the history of our past. Yes, again, many people might have visited Kanakadurga Temple at Vijayawada. Most of the people, every day at least um, uh, before the corona, at least every day 10,000 people. During the Sara, 40,000, 50,000, 80,000 were also visit this temple. This temple, Kanakadurga Temple, has a very uh, historical past. On the top of the Indrakila Hill, there is a temple where I am sitting there and uh, taking uh, drawings. That is what we call Partha Iswara Swami Temple. This was Partha Iswara Temple. Arjuna, there is a legend in Kerala Arjuniya of Dandi. What is it? Arjuna, while uh, he was uh, uh, praying Lord Shiva for Pasupatastra, then he, wa he was there, he did it, then uh, Shiva came to test him. Both the uh, waged what we call a small war type thing because of a pig, etc. The story, entire story, and uh, is uh, engraved on a stone. There is an inscription of 9th century AD which says that uh, in the previous eras, Arjuna uh, did penance here and got Patrasatra here. Hence, it is called Parthesar Swami Temple on Indra Keladri Hill. So, this is very interesting. This is on the top of the hill, nobody goes now. And you, as you see, this is a pillar. This pillar was exactly where I was sitting. And it fell down in 1900, 1933. Nobody was able again to take up to the top. And it is now lying on the, at the foot of the Indra Keladri hill. Before you go to Kanakadurga temple, you can see this. The, another interesting story of this pillar is the inscription you have to read from the bottom to the top. There are 14 lines. Very interesting. So what this, to, this uh, pillar says is the history of Vijayawada. I call it a signature of Vijayawada because Arjuna, after procuring Paspatasra, was called as Vijaya. He acquired victoriously. Then uh, after him only, the locality was called as Vijayavatika. Then it was called as Vijayawada. Then it was called as Bezawada. Now in 15, uh, 1954, the then Bezawada was renamed as Vijayawada. Now Vijayawada is named after this pillar and named after that Parthesara temple. Yes, again, there is a story. We will go back to 1000 years um, back and can reveal the story connected with our mythology. Next, uh, there are certain inscriptions even still today in NK Pauli in Vijayawada. There is uh, thousand years old inscription on which again Ganapa, Gajapati's inscription is also there. But uh, it was lying, lying for the past uh, so many years. When we sensitized the local people and priests, they said, oh, it is none of our duty. Um, let the archaeology department do it. At least uh, they come to know that it is not an ordinary slab. It bears an inscription. Yes, 
can you notice it is very interesting avansa is in mahabubuna district of telangana there lies a very beautiful biggest of entire indian context ganesha which really is 25 feet high 18 feet in width and uh, 8 feet in thickness this is uh, so far the biggest monolithic uh, ganesha idol in entire indian context it was carved in uh, what we call in uh, 12th century ad by the local chiefs called kanduri cholas who were subordinates to kalyani chalukya so is it not yes we can say that every uh, in every house uh, we will have a small piece of uh, ganesha idol but this is so big so people started visiting it now uh, that is the story what we do is the story is not only on the iconography of the idol but when it was why it was that is it yes can you see uh, in one way they the local people do not know if they color it coloring they do only for annual festival every year when we go and ask them to stop it they don't stop they say that no 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 uh, we are taking bath every day at least for god once a year we have to coat colors and the varieties of colors they coat on the body of the all the antiquarian values the sculptures they have ornaments they have drapery they have beautiful headgear uh, eyes are there and his two wives chanakeshavaka two wives are there but uh, coated with if we want to uh, coating is very easy if we want to remove with the chemicals it is very costly and uh, not only costly but we are losing the antiquarian value of 13th century ad sculpture nobody knows that it is 13th century because of its colors like that yes inscriptions people are not at all bothered this is actually a 12th century inscription again from uh, chagi potai raju this is from nandigama district again people actually won't know it that uh, uh, this is a historical they say that oh it has been lying since years and years they don't know because it is our responsibility to erect a small legend on the historical uh, incident of our uh, uh, historical significance of that thing then it is just left like that like any other ordinary stone so we have to uh, sensitize the people on the historicity when how it is the department of archaeology or the lecturers of history department of various colleges can uh, come to such voluntary um, these things yes you are looking at a pot this is not an ordinary pot we call it as a storage jar but this jar was recovered from multiple excavations not excavations when they were actually active agricultural operations they come across well they tilling the land they come across this thing and it is uh, enamel coat was there on this thing it was uh, um, re, what we call imported from china this is dated to 14th century ad motpally was a port which has an international uh, uh yeah import and exports it was an uh, what to call an emporium also so for local people don't know they are storing it what to call the grains paddy they are storing paddy when i went there i said no 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 please don't do it uh, do you know uh, the antiquity bolle to they said no then i revealed everything marco polo visited this place and he went and reported to rudrama devi of the 13th century kakatiya empress on the brisk trading activity ganpati deva issued a chapter here called the first life insurance was given from here bombay so uh, in entire world context insurance for the sea trade was given there is an inscription at this place so like that what happens is the story that uh, the part tells like that we can uh, create a story yes can you notice how pathetic the bhairava image is there and bhairava image was lying that after that what happens was uh, the local rn panchayat raj department has laid a road on it can't they just lift and uh, attach to the wall no they said it is none of our business but they laid what to call bt black top and it was fixed thoroughly as as it is where it is and uh, at least 2 to 2 3 feet was inside the road so this is such cases have to be
taken very seriously and we have right to the concerned officers so that it could be removed and properly displayed. Yes, again, a success story. When we visited a place called Gudimetla, there was again a stone upside down. People were shooting every day on it for taking some what you call relaxation. But uh, when I saw there is a sculpture of Saptamatruka. What is Saptamatruka? Brahmi Mahechari Chaiva Kaumari Vaishnavi Tatha Varahicha Tadendrani Chamunda Saptamatraha Dakshine Adakshin Ocha Vera Bhadra Vinayakau. So this is the Vera Bhadra Vinayaka on either side and in between, right from Brahmi to Chamunda. He is known as Seven Mothers. It is a very interesting story in mythology, Devi Sapta. Uh, Saptasiti, etc. But what happens is that uh, we have to tell them. Local people do not know. Since we are taught in the classrooms, we know it. So similarly, whenever we come across, if we, if we don't know the story, please pass it on to the local archaeology department. They will give you the real meaning of it. Then we can make uh, people aware of the historical fact so that they can preserve it. You see, when I told these many people have come forward, lifted physically and uh, shifted it to inside the temple when it was thrown outside without taking any care, it is now moved into the temple. Yes, very interesting. Another pathetic story is that Ganapati Devas uh, has three daughters. Now. One is Rudrama Devi, Rani Rudrama Devi, who ruled from uh, uh, Varangal. Then her sister was given. Uh, to a local king at, in Guntur district, a place called Yanamagala. And she issued one inscription. That inscription, the local people used to raise their compound wall using it as basement. A 13th century inscription with date well inscribed that was used as basement stone for compound, ordinary compound wall. They said, no, 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 it was useless lying there for centuries. And we uh, so, so uh, this thing we so smartly we have used. Then I said, I, I read the inscription some part because it is uh, still buried. So such things are happening in the rural areas. It is for us, um, students or lecturers, whatever it may be, our heritage uh, activists to this thing. For many such uh, uh, our tours, Mr. Bargo and his team has accompanied me many places and we sensitized in different, different villages. Sorry, this is repeated. Yes, now we are coming to another beautiful inscription of 14 feet 3 inches high, the biggest in entire South India. Again, 3 feet 3 inches width. There are 222 lines, very lengthy inscription, which gives and the genealogy of the Kakatiyas and etc. Very interestingly, it also records the birthday of Rani Rudrama Devi, who has uh, celebrated uh, in this part of the country. In uh, what you call again in uh, on the right bank of River Krishna in Guntur district, Rani Rudrama Devi celebrated her birthday in 1262 AD March 25th. March 25th is her birthday. It was recorded in the inscriptions. For the first time, I only revealed that fact. The date was known earlier, but uh, Janma Dinotsava was for the first time curled out from the inscription and uh, many people are now visiting it. Unfortunately, this inscription is camouflaged by huts and hutments all around without leaving a meter all around. Now, uh, the, we requested the local people, they are now being given new sites and this inscription will be properly displayed on a huge pedestal for the benefit of the mini and a small park is also going to come up there. Yes. Now, again story. Why these people are killing? They are killing themselves. They are not killing others uh, in like in war or battle. No. They are not killing their enemies. They are killing themselves. Why they are killing themselves? It is belief. What is that belief? It is a system. And that system is, in Saibism, what happens is, they make some pledges or they, 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 they take some woes. If the woe is fulfilled, what is that woe? If, for example, I am a local ruler, I do not have progeny for so many times. Then after these, my servants, what we call, they will pray Lord Malikarjuna that, uh, oh God, if my Lord gets a boy this year uh, as his son, 
i will offer myself that is the woe so innocently they do some people in the name of dedication to the god they will kill can you notice how they are killing themselves and uh, intestines are coming out this lady is also cutting her head while praying the god in the hands there are symbols are there they pray god and at the same time they offer themselves these are known as what we call self sacrificing hero stones what is a hero a hero is who who who, who wins a battle or who uh, successfully makes a wonderful effort which people will christian uh, or uh, that uh, event in their memory those are called as heroes these are also called as heroes because of their religious uh, faith and they offered their life so such hero stones are plenty in tripurantak area in rayal sim area many such things are there when you come across please know there will be a local story on the top of each sculpture there will be ramba urvasi apsarasa and tilottama welcoming these heroes to the heaven so that they can get veera swarga so these are there are certain stories in karnataka a dog a pet dog was uh, a pet dog died for it they erected a hero stone because they loved it so much they cannot uh, uh, bear that uh, what to call grief so they carved a uh, dog's sculpture and erected it like a hero stone so this is interesting now unless until we are informed uh, we don't know we ignore we simply see and uh, pass uh, from there uh, oh, no, we really don't know about it yes again buddhism not uh, declined in 3rd century 4th century ad in andhra pradesh this is a wonderful buddha image uh, 14th century ad in etu again in the right uh, left bank of river krishna in uh, nandigama taluk why i am showing all these things is buddhism continued and there is this is not the regular buddha you can see that flames at the back of his head that is a lot of stories could be um, uh, stories could be uh, told but thing is that it was recovered while laying a road while they are laying a road they remove the debris while they are removing the debris when they hit with the crowbars they got the sound and when they uh, carefully dug out they they come across with such a beautiful wonderful dolerite well polished buddha of 14th century ad so such things are happening in rural areas and they themselves have shifted it to the local high school and preserving it for posterity even though there is no shelter but anyhow at least in safe custody yes you see again pathetic thing is why i am showing all uh, attaining things is at least my dear young students they can they can resort to such a, a beautiful uh, what to call uh, uh, a movement preserving our heritage yes uh, uh, do you notice that there is a temple that temple was built in 14th century ad by the reddies of kondavidu and this temple is a trikuta temple three shrines all around but what happened since there is no regular maintenance this was in disuse people started using it as a garage for their tractors it is what we call misuse and abuse so we went there and we asked them please remove it work no 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 this is centuries together we are uh, using it like that only who are you to tell all those things then we convinced uh, the local sarpanch we asked them to come over there convened a meeting with the local neighbors and then they started realizing that yes that is a temple it is not they who they are not the owners of it and the entire village it is under the ownership of the entire village it is the collective heritage property of the entire village then these persons who who so far were using for their selfish end they removed all those things and now it is kept in well upkeep yes again very recently you are uh, coming across in the news items that uh, some 17 or 18 a uh, copper plate inscription have come from sri salem while a temple is being renovated and uh, i was in charge of that uh, some 3 years back and i noticed that there is a big uh, uh, bell hence it is called as ghanta matha there are panch mathas this is ghanta matha veerabhadra matha like that there are and here what happens is a 14th century sorry 
uh, 16th century inscription is there in which some parts, uh, some villages in Karnataka were donated to the uh, Malikarjuna Swami temple. So, why I am telling this is, this is again left uncared. Deeds can be stolen. So, some precautionary measures would be taken for such, anti such antiquities. It is a bell. It was made uh, some 500 years. Apart from that, we can know the technology, how it was cast. Then, we, we also have an inscription on that. And I am finding out the Kannada Canaries inscription. So, this is how we can take students there and inform the historicity of those things. Yes, again at Sri Salem, on the compound wall of Sri Salem, you have got more than 3,000 sculptures. Each sculpture has a story. And here it is a story, there is a story. What is the story? When Shiva was uh, in his climax of um, Tandava, what happens was they all uh, the musical instruments were also on and uh, uh, Ganapati, he started again giving musical notes through flute. It is a very rare sculpture. And uh, Jayapasena's inscription mentions that Ambodaraya Ambu Ambodara, sorry, Lambodaraya Ambu Murdanga Tadanaya. Uh, when Shiva was uh, dancing, he beats the surface of the water table on the, on the uh, river Ganges and uh, emanates a wonderful, beautiful musical notes to complement the dance of his father. So such are things. If you read Shiva Purana, there is a wonderful story on it. So identification of the uh, particular story and connecting it to mythology and revealing to the local what happens was people will spend some time, appreciate our culture. Yes, again, negligence. What negligence? Pulichintala project is being constructed. Now, I think it is almost over and uh, some uh, 10 to 15 villages were submerged into it, but the people moved, they have shifted their houses, they got new houses under rehabilitation, but uh, God, he has no voice, he was uncared. His house is left again, uh, uncared, and uh, the Nandi bull is also there, sculptures are there. So like that, what happens was, since there is no owner, since there is no voice, no agitation from gods, no agitation from Wiseless cultures, they are in neglected state. Again, Kohlur. You might have heard of Kohinoor. The Kohinoor diamond was mined from this particular place only. Again, it is in the submergible, <coughs> submergible area of Pulichintala uh, project in um, Kuntu district. Uh, when I was again interviewing in, in, in people how they could collect. Um, uh, precious stones where Kohinoor diamond was mined in um, 13th century, then it um, uh, shifted uh, at many times, maybe many hands, and finally it is in the crown of Victoria in London. So I went there. All of a sudden, what happened? People were digging for uh, precious stones. All of a sudden, a sculpture has come out in my presence. It was very interesting. Then I gave it to press, etc. So such are what we call uh, emotional. We become so emotional uh, when we come across such things in history. Yes, again, you see, every day, hundreds of lorries will fly over this uh, slab. And uh, when we saw, there is an inscription of Krishna Devaraya, 1516 AD, when he was camping at Vijayawada. This is Tadigarpa in Vijayawada only. He has donated uh, some plot of land to God Ramalingeshwara, the local temple. So, can you notice that this was thoroughly neglected, uncared, and every day lorries were flying on it. So, we went there, sensitized the local people, and uh, lifted it properly and cleaned it. Now, people are respecting it. If uh, they, they used to get their relatives, they are bringing their relatives and tell that, yes, Krishnadevara inscription, then and their self-esteem is uh, doubled. Yes, cattles. For inscription, it is actually Sadasivaraya's inscription in a place called Vapicharla, again in uh, Palnadu, from Macharla to Vinukonda route. What happens? They are tying uh, cows to this particular inscription slab. They say, no, 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 it is very useful for us. I went there, said that read out the inscription of uh, 
uh, 1540s, then Sadashivarayas, then they said, no, 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 we don't know this uh, the script, so that we are using it for tying cows. Then they, they removed uh, the cows and now it is well protected. Again, can you notice, it is very close to Tirupati, very close, four kilometers from Chandragiri, a fortification, but nobody takes care. Very recently, our classical survey of India has cleared it very recently, soon after I publicized it in the uh, newspaper. Yes, what is it? It was again a place where the original Kratus were done. Here, this is known as Siddhan Kottam. This place is known as Siddhan Kottam in Tamil, from where the uh, all the sacrificial ritual uh, fruits will be taken to the top of Tirumala Hills. This is again. Uh, 13th, 14th century AD. In Tirupati, again, when you move from Tirupati to uh, Chandragiri, a place called Tondavada, there lies a unfinished Gopra. And this Gopra was built by whom? By a very interesting personality, the grandson of Annamacharya. Annamacharya has left us with 32,000 Kirtanas uh, utilizing Venkateshwarana. So he is the greatest musician and composer. His grandson, he actually uh, acted as a, uh, what we call a, a judge uh, for two communities, of weaving, two weaving communities. Finally, the one section of the community won their uh, case and they have given huge money to this man. This man said, what can I do with this money? And he built a temple and it is known as Timmappa Temple. Timmappa, Venkateswar Swami is also called as Timmappa. You see, now it was in uh, thoroughly disused in uh, dilapidation. Na? Then I notice um, publicized it in Hindu newspaper. Then the local Tirupati people went there and they cleared it. Now it is made uh, so beautiful. So these are certain stories. What is the story? The story behind this dilapidated uh, ruin is grandson of uh, uh, Annamacharya. That is the thing. Very interesting story. Yes. Can you notice? There are no kings. The dynasties flourish. Kings also were very in their uh, this thing. But uh, all the kings are gone. All the dynasties are gone. But what happened? The relics of the dynasties even still today lie in villages, but they are not taking care. This is what we call a 17th century AD temple car in disuse and misuse. Nobody is taking care. Very recently, I requested the trust board of that particular temple at Patipadu. They now removed all these things and started renovating with old material and restoring the lost and uh, damaged portion. This is the way in which if you have a will, there is a way for um, coming out of our problem. Yes, again, near Tirupati, I come across a mandapa. This is known as Deshantara mandapa. What is Deshantara? Is that during those days, in 16th, 17th centuries, people used to go by, by walk only, by foot, they go to Tirumala temple. Before they climb up the Tirumala hill, uh, at the foot of the hill, they will take rest for some time, take food, and again start resume their walk. So this is known as Deshantara Mandapa, that is a pavilion for the people coming from faraway places or faraway countries. Country means not a foreign country. Within uh, our national boundaries, they used to call it as Desha, Desha Antar Mandapa. So you see, it is now uh, prey for treasure hunters. We shall not allow. If we keep it clean, nobody will go there. Yes, again, Lepakshi bull, it has a story. And the story goes like this. You all know that uh, how the temple of Lepakshi was built by the treasurer of uh, Achyuta Devaraya, Sadashevaraya. And not to Sadashevra Achyutraya of the Vijayanagara kingdom, he took government money from government treasure and he built a temple at Lepakshi and again responsible for carving this uh, unique monolithic Nandi because Nandi is their surname. Nandi, Lucky City is their king. So like that what happens was, it is very interesting for them. There is a story of how the temple of Lepakshi was built. Finally, he kills himself because king wanted to punish him for his misappropriation of fund, etc. Beautiful stories are there. 
if you go there reveal it me with with your friends it will be really thrilling and we will have a sense of responsibility to respect preserve for such things which are available throughout the country yes now there is again you are now looking at uh, krishna devaraya with folded hands and uh, flanked by his two wives chinna devi and tirumala devi it is located in these are uh, panchaloha idols located in tirumala temple which is known as pratima mandapa as soon as you enter the main temple on the right side you come across these three temple but krishna devaraya is such a greatest uh, mighty emperor who conquered all the entire south india and went even conquered the cap to katak in varissa then while he he was going to varissa uh, next to simhasana temple he erected a victorious pillar this is the victorious pillar of uh, krishna devaraya at kotnur in trikakulam vijayanagaram and uh, trikakulam district area so this is now uh, erected there and uh, many historians and research scholars are going and uh, what is the story that it is revealing the story it revealing is that when he set say or started for his na uh, eastern campaign um, what we call is that turpo digvijayatra when he started right from hampi vijayanagara he comes first to odayagiri conquers it addanki seizes it then great war at kondavedu great war at kondapalli then he conquers tangeda ketavaram venukonda rajamahendravaram many forts finally he moves with victorious campaign up to katak and he conquers katak also to commemorate his visit he erects this huge hindu victorious pillar victory pillar or jay stambha so this is the story for ordinary people it looks like what you call a naga devata or a shivalinga or a pillar but uh, it speaks volumes of history and uh, krishna devaraya he set sail for and he visited tirumala temple for six times the the presence of uh, krishna devaraya inscription in uh, temple is that he visited temple for seven times six times with his wife and seventh time only lonely so this is there are stories like that yes ek only one pillar masjid in yellow it has also got a history when uh, kuli kutub shah ibrahim kuli kutub shah wanted uh, to see the sea at masli patnam he started coming right from golconda and uh, for his daily five times of namaz he wanted to construct masjids at various frequencies so that he could offer prayers on time so this is one such miniature very miniature one one meter height miniature historical masjid in mass in yellow it is very interesting it looks like very simple but historical it is in kutub shahi architecture why i am telling is we simply ignore ah, what is there work no it has also though it is small it bears lot of historical significance and connects us to the huti kutub shahi times and the journey of ibrahim kutub shah from golconda to masjid patnam and why there is a lot of story Yes, again, I am going to conclude my talk. That is a stepped well in Sri Kala Hasti, which was built by the local zamindars in the late 19th century. It is very interesting. They, this is known as Kasa Building, and there is a wonderful palace is also there, but in ruins. And the royal people, women, they there is a corridor, there is a dressing, dress changing room, and the well they used to. just uh, get down into it so comfortably safely and again come back like when uh, it acted like a swimming pool you can appreciate the uh, lime plaster uh, stucco finish etc and the way in which they enjoyed inside their royal harem with what to call water sports etc so most of the people won't know it now unless until we publicize it it also has a story of late 19th century but uh, Uh, what we need is a little bit of patience to go visit spend some time collect the local stories then again disseminate our uh, uh, stories to others then they will respect it yes the last one is yadadri temple now telangana government spending nearly 400 to 500 crores our kanasha is constructing a very huge temple for the first time can you notice more than 1000 sculptors were put to 
uh, action and uh, thousands of tons of stone was quarried transported removed the uh, extra mass then drop thousands of uh, drawings on each and every pillar finally like how the um, vijayanagar period uh, temples like at uh, um, tamil nadu madura rameswaram kanchi etc na same or hampi vijayanagara same vijayanagara picture is replicated here why i am showing is that there are people if we have got a will there is a way in which it could be translated into action my thanks to all the participants for their patient uh, hearing and the thing is that though i am not able to uh, convincingly make my present presentation in a sequential order but i have picked up a few incidents and sculptures and temples and other monuments so that at least the younger generation could uh, develop little bit of interest and they start appreciating our an uh, ancient uh, heritage monument which is a collective and national property of the indians now i am thankful once again to the organizers for giving me an opportunity and for the patient hearing of the uh, participants now it is open for uh, discussion or if you have got any queries uh, most welcome hello 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 bargao unmute unmute bargao hello Hello <coughs> Hello am I going to man ఏదో ఎవరు రెస్పాండ్ కావట్లేదే పార్కు కానీ ఎవరు నేను ఇప్పుడు ఓపెన్ పార్క్ వచ్చిన సమయం అసలు ఎవరు అసలు అసలు ఒక్కసారి చెప్పండి అమ్మా hello
అసలు చెప్పండి కొద్దిగా లేకపోతే మీ సైడ్ నుంచి ఒకళ్ళని చెప్పేస్తే సరిపోద్ది కదా వాళ్ళకి ప్రదేశ్ so with your wonderful words and uh, story sir uh, so you. we have with us uh, the presence of uh, two great cultural activists joining us from various countries uh, okay. so we have with us sri devi sri neeraj garu joining us from oman so <laughs> sri devi sri neeraj garu is the cultural secretary of oman very good very good so sri devi garu has joined us from oman at the same time we also have sirisha ram garu uh, cultural secretary of uh, andhra kala vedika qatar so sirisha ram garu has joined from qatar so thank very you very much sirisha garu for joining us from qatar sir we also have the presence of sri anil garu who have joined from oman sir anil garu is the president of oman telugu sangam so anil garu also has joined in meeting so now i request sri dev sri neesh garu to go ahead with the question sri dev garu me video on chesi you ask the question thank you unmute chestam ani cheppandi unmute cheya yeah yeah నమస్కారం అండి గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ ఫర్ ఎడ్యుకేటింగ్ అస్ ఆన్ అవర్ అసెట్స్ యాక్చువల్లీ విడిన్ యూ దీస్ మెనీ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ ఇన్ అవర్ కంట్రీ ఆన్ సీయింగ్ యువర్ ప్రెసెంటేషన్ యాక్చువల్లీ టియర్స్ రోల్ అవుట్ ఫ్రమ్ మై ఐస్ భార్గవ్ గారు సారీ ఫర్ దట్ అండి ఐ విల్ జస్ట్ గో హెడ్ అండి ప్లీజ్ Yeah, please. Uh, uh, actually, sir, on seeing your presentation, we understood that uh, yeah. people doesn't know the value of few things. You told that uh, uh, buildings are built on uh, sculpt- uh, sculptures. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what is the way to educate people? Even if I go there, I will not be- know the value yes, of yes. that. Yes, no, we cannot find fault with the local people, ma'am, because it is our duty. That is the difference between literate and uh, illiterate. It is not different, sir. Similarly, in history city, mein, that is our responsibility of the Department of Archaeology, our INTAC, our voluntary organizations have to disseminate knowledge or they should, uh, my proposal was we worked out with uh, Bhargav and his team 
Amaravati Heritage Club, in which we the, the local local clubs can associate with it. We can go on uh, sending them uh, the style sheets of what we call historical information to document and display. So that is the only way, ma'am. Unless we uh, we cannot blame the local people that they are misusing because they say, oh no, we don't know. Nobody bothered about it. Why should we bother? So I agree with you, ma'am. Uh, we 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 are sensitizing the people visiting so far more than 400 villages in the state. They now started slowly, slowly understanding, appreciating, and boosting their self-esteem that we have an inscription of 600 years old in our village like that. And is there any movement for us common man like me yes, to join? And join hands with you and no, work with you. Actually, we now want uh, to start one thing that is our heritage volcano. So that uh, we want to build from uh, CCVA with uh, the support of Mr. Bhargav and his team. Bhargav has a very, uh, he is not a single man. He is now heading a containment, uh, what we call contingent of more than thousands of uh, people. So, we can uh, we can have a separate meeting, ma'am. So that what happens was we will check out a program in which at least we from our own areas can initiate a little bit of action for preservation of our own uh, heritage properties slowly. Yes, thank you. If nice. that is initiated, it will be very helpful. Very nice, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bhargav Garu for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, uh, th thank you. Thank you very much, Sri, Sri Garu. One minute, Andy. Ah. One minute, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, hello. Yeah, wait. I'll I'll unmute Renu Sri. Yeah. Uh, Renu Sri, please go ahead with your question. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. Please. What is the difference between archaeology and art history, sir? Art archaeology uh, is a science in which they they explore or they dig and uh, uh, write history. But uh, what you call the other part is uh, art history is only regarding the history of art and the specific features of a particular sculpture or a style that is different. For example, Chatavahana period is there. They ruled from 1st century BC to 3rd century AD. But uh, during that period, huge number of uh, sculptures were created, Buddhist sculpture. It is known as Amaravati school of art. And people, they don't bother about the history of the dynasty, but they are bothered about how the history, the history of art, how it evolved over a period of time, what were the changes from the first century to second century, from third century, then what are the innovative ideas went into making that sculpture. This is what we call history of art, or whether it is painting or sculpture, that is, uh, we closely study, differentiate, and distinguish from one dynasty to another dynasty. This is art history. Whereas archaeology is to dig the past by conducting excavations, retrieving material, again placing the antiquities, processing it for writing, then publishing reports, and reconstructing our own history with the latest historical information that we retrieved through uh, excavations or inscriptions or whatever it may be. This is the difference. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, Renka. And uh, now we have Sirisha Ramgaru uh, joining Ramgaru. us from Qatar. Qatar. Yes. So, Sirisha Ramgaru is the secretary of uh, Andhra Kala Vedika Qatar. Uh, so, yes. she's a very active member of uh, Women's Wing of Qatar. Uh, so, I request Sirisha Ramgaru to share her views. Sirisha Ramgaru, please. Yeah. Uh, uh, namaste, Andy. Nagreti Garu. 
వీడియో ఆన్ చేయలేనండి నేను సడన్ గా జాయిన్ అయ్యాను కదా సో ఐమ్ నాట్ యూ నో వెల్ ప్రిపేర్ దో so uh, though i joined in the last moment uh, like i i thoroughly enjoyed andy uh, uh, you know by uh, seeing all this uh, uh, slides uh, about our history and our, you know rich culture and everything and it's very very nice presentation and very inspiring and uh, people who are living like you know another like outside countries and all it's it's very very important much important to, to know about our culture and our rich assets and all so mm-hmm. i ante nenu ippudu ee presentation ante last moment lo chusna gaani i personally etla feel ayyan ante normally uh, people who are living in the outside countries we we normally prefer to go world trips and all వెకేషన్స్ వెళ్ళినప్పుడు ఏంటంటే ఎక్కువ ప్రిఫర్ చేస్తాము ఏవైనా షార్ట్ ట్రిప్ హాలిడేస్ వచ్చేసినప్పుడు వి ప్రిఫర్ టు గో ఫర్ అనో వరల్డ్ ట్రిప్స్ బట్ ఇప్పుడు ఇప్పుడు నాకు పర్సనల్ గా అనిపించింది ఏంటంటే వీ హ్యావ్ ఆర్ ఓన్ కల్చర్ టు నో అబౌట్ అండ్ నో టు టేక్ ఇట్ ఫార్వర్డ్ టు ద నెక్స్ట్ జనరేషన్స్ మన పిల్లలు ఖచ్చితంగా తెలుసుకోవాలి ఇండియన్ కల్చర్ ఎంత గొప్పగా ఉంటుంది అనేసి సో చాలా బాగా అనిపించింది అండి అండ్ ఐఎమ్ వెరీ ప్రౌడ్ టు బి ఇండియన్ అండ్ యూనో టు నో అబౌట్ దిస్ రిచ్ కల్చర్ అండ్ ఆల్ అండ్ వన్ థింగ్ నాగిరెడ్డి గారు అంటే ఇప్పుడు మనకి ఇది చాలా ఈ హిస్టారికల్ మాన్యుమెంట్స్ ఇవన్నీ వచ్చేసి బికాస్ ఆఫ్ అంటే వెదర్ ఇట్ వెదర్ ఇట్ ఇస్ నాచురల్ డిజాస్టర్ ఆర్ హ్యూమన్ పొల్యూషన్ వాట్ ఎవర్ ద రీజన్ చాలా అంటే ఏమంటారు శిథిలావస్థ అని అంటారు కదా అట్లా అయిపోతున్నాయి సో హౌ డూ యూ గోన్ ప్రొటెక్ట్ దమ్ ఎట్లాంటి ప్రికాషన్స్ మీరు తీసుకోకపోతున్నారు అంటే యాజ్ ఏ కామన్ మ్యాన్ మేమే మేము ఎలా రెస్పాన్సిబుల్ ఉండాలి వాటిని కాపాడుకోవాలంటే ఒకటి మేడం ఒకటేమో గవర్నమెంట్ చేస్తుంది ఇది లిటిల్ బిట్ వే ఒక స్ట్రక్చర్ లో పోతా ఉంటారు సెంట్రల్ గవర్నమెంట్ హ్యాస్ ఇట్స్ ఓన్ మాన్యుమెంట్ మాన్యుమెంట్స్ ఆఫ్ నేషనల్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ దే డిక్లేర్ దెమ్ హాస్ ప్రొటెక్టెడ్ మాన్యుమెంట్స్ ఆఫ్ నేషనల్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ విచ్ ఈస్ విచ్ ఆర్ మెయింటైన్ బై ఆర్కలాజికల్ సర్వే ఆఫ్ ఇండియా దట్ ఈస్ సెంట్రల్ గవర్నమెంట్ బికాస్ ది సబ్జెక్ట్ ఈస్ కంకరెంట్ state departments also are there these will look after the monuments of regional importance but thing is nowadays what happened in government <clears throat> once a person retired no recruitment and filling of that vacancy what happens over a period of time whom so ever retired are retired and gone since the crunch of what to call uh, manpower they are not able to maintain all the monuments that they have on their list in this case what happens is adopt a monument is a scheme first time launched in rajasthan and many navaratna companies or other companies have come forward to take but there is there are also certain intricacies in which we have to enter an mou make um, some guarantee that the, we will take care and every month recurring, recurring expenditure and for conservation also there will be some expenditure provided sincere commitment if the, if some people with sincere commitment uh, we and uh, this is this is for the protected monuments we have to enter into an mou and uh, mutual agreement may we have to take care of the monuments are said on the other hand there are thousands of monuments uh, not declared either by state or central government what about them so the local communities are like people like you uh, come into a trust or society they can adopt it sensitize the local people we cannot all the you cannot all the way come from qatar for doing all these things uh, for once in a month no but uh, under your supervision or with your kind support or advice they can maintain and we can provide them whatever technical support they need how to do it how to write a signage how to write a legend board and how to upkeep how to clean them even cleaning is we are not supposed to use brooms we have to use only that hair brushes or some nylon brushes are there like that we have certain methodologies developed over a period of time how to clean maintain restore conserve preserve and upkeep like that we have but uh, uh it, it is our response our failure also not to sensitize the people or bring awareness so the cultural center of vijayawada and amaravati has taken up a program called preserve heritage for posterity in which we visited 400 villages so far documented and sensitized the people people started 
respecting their uh, heritage and they now treat it as their own that is uh, the, there are many such success stories ma'am okay okay thank you sir sir uh, good evening sir there is one questions we have got from facebook sir so we are taking two questions uh, so we'll end up with the two questions sir so the first question is so how to promote this heritage through social media among youth so that is one question asked so thing is that uh, now most of the youth uh, is busily engaged in social media i we know apart from their uh, regular studies etc that is the only fastest and most uh, uh, effective means in which we can propagate our mission what is that mission is preserve heritage for posterity we both will sit for some time after the the series of meetings are over we have already prepared some posters to post on uh, social media websites etc and uh, thing is that through uh, social media we have uh, at least weekly once we can launch one poster sensitizing the people automatically on looking at that particular before and after before is in the neglect after is with the involvement of the local community so it is taken care with the two peaks what happens is it leaves an impact on the viewers or the youngsters nowadays youngsters are more sensitive they say oh it is our responsibility how can we uh, move away from our responsibility they are so sensible now they are coming forward to spend money to join hands that is the thing we can um, sort out a small program for them after a week uh, uh, bargo thank you sir another question uh, from vindya eluru uh, so she is asking the question uh, so why ha ah, why hello <coughs> guess learning history is useful to the youth and uh, no, i couldn't get once again Yes, sir. In, in what ways engineers or any science students should learn history? Ah, okay, okay. Yes. Why, why, why it is why it is useful for them? Why yes, they should learn? I will, I will tell. For example, whether it is engineering or science or technology, whatever it may be, everything has its own history. History of engineering, history of technology, history of science, history of physics, history of philosophy. history of culture do you know everything has its own history unless until we have got a little bit of uh, intuition to spare some time to learn what uh, happened in history at least in our own area of interest first they should begin there then they can read uh, books connected to that particular aspect or interest of um, uh, the youth one thing second thing is that unless until we know the past yeah, what happens is today stands on yesterday and tomorrow stands on today if we dismantle yesterday there is no today if we if i dismantle today there is no tomorrow like that what happens is we are simply in uh, you know, what we call is some section of people are literally ah uh, what is there in history why we should spend history that is past is past we have to think about future but no we should live with the ethos and values that the people of bygone eras have handed over weaving is the weaving uh, is the innovation of the present generation no we have got right from neolithic period pottery making right from that period but a transport system right from neolithic period agriculture mesolithic period so whatever you go are building construction the first house in andhra pradesh was built 2100 bc at holikal in anantapur that was there in my thesis that is proven by archaeological sources like that what happens is construction building construction has its own history 2100 bc at least in andhra pradesh but in industrial civilization it is more than 5000 years is it not history is it not the history of building is it not the history of building material is it not the history of 
making buildings engineering architecture supervision what we call the entire gamut of your construction activity has its own history what we need is little bit of interest and intuition to learn it i can uh, supplement information for the group if they want i can make presentation on any of the thing how fortifications were built how secular architecture developed how bridges used to be developed how roads were laid we have the earliest road in andhra pradesh from ramapuram in karnool district that is 1750 bc a road was there like that we have many things we have a suspension bridge at satani kota in uh, karnool district near nandikotko suspension bridge do you know satani kota is a fortification but that is the if you want to enter that fort you have to cross that moat moat is moat will be there na a ditch and it is filled with river krishna water then you have to cross it but if you are permitted you can straight away go thorough fair but if you are not for uh, permitted the suspension bridge will uh, what we call open up you cannot there will not be any accessibility like uh, how we have in kolkata na that kolkata lo undu kada suspension bridge similarly we have in first century bc so many such things are there even my thesis is on evolution of building technology in andhra pradesh right from 2100 bc to 1400 ad i am not uh, uh, what we call i am not asking all the people to read my own this no there are many pieces of writings available to know history of our foundations how foundations were laid during those time like that many things are there your interested groups can consult me i can give them enough information with evidences hello 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 uh, sir Uh, we have a question from sai karan sir sai karan bhi please go ahead with the question sai karan is from hello Hi. hello hello sir this is sai karan good afternoon good afternoon sir uh, sir what kind of jobs are there for someone uh, with the archaeology degree sir yes archaeology degree one thing is that archaeology cannot be uh, studied for passion it is not like that it is only when people seek some placement also placements are happening at archaeological survey of india one then in colleges as uh, lecturers in the universities as professors over a period of time and uh, more than that is that most of the archaeologists are uh, now engaged in uh, what you call in in uh, conservation also by the local bodies for example vijayawada municipal corporation is there there are more than 100 listed monuments but archaeology department says we are busy we cannot do asi say no 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 we have our own no, i have then these uh, municipal corporations or local bodies have their own heritage committees through which they will undertake preserving the listed monuments na in these areas they will get employment one thing by local bodies another is consultancies offering consultancy for conservation major conservation works of forts and uh, uh, residential buildings and other palaces etc go to rajasthan there are many palaces now in renovation or renovation is over there is an organization called drona like that many such heritage conservation uh, organizations are there wherein these people are recruited हेलो सैगर हेलो హలో సార్ హలో హాయ్ సార్ నా పేరు పవన్ జొన్నలగడ్డ పవన్ గారు అవును సార్ ఈ జొన్నలగడ్డ మీది ఇక్కడ గుంటూరు జిల్లాలో ఒక జొన్నలగడ్డ ఉంది కృష్ణా జిల్లాలో ఉంది చాలా ఉన్నాయి జొన్నలగడ్డలు 
డౌట్ ఇప్పుడు ఆర్కియాలజికల్ సైట్స్ ని మీరు అసలు ఎలా ఐడెంటిఫై చేస్తారు సార్ దట్ ఈస్ వెరీ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ ఎట్లా అంటే మాకు ఏమైందంటే ఇన్ కోర్స్ ఆఫ్ అవర్ డూయింగ్ ద ఎంటైర్ ప్రోగ్రామ్ ఆఫ్ టూ ఇయర్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్కియాలజీ వీ విల్ బి థియరటికల్లీ టాట్ ఇన్ ద క్లాస్ రూమ్ అండ్ సమ్టైమ్స్ వీ విల్ బి టేకెన్ టు సైట్స్ సైట్స్ లైక్ ప్రీ హిస్టారిక్ సైట్స్ విత్ ఇన్ ప్రీ హిస్టరీ దెర్ ఆర్ మెనీ అదర్ సబ్ సెక్షన్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ and coming to history it is from 6th century bc and uh, up to 4th century ad so what happens is pre mauryan so oh, mauryan ka site this is the mauryan characteristics of art construction greeks palaces uh, whatever it may be then after that is post mauryan songa satavahana kushana like that we will be taught in the classroom then we will be visually uh taken to certain sites and given ample evidence to understand in practical sense so then after that we will be taken to some excavations how excavation will be um, progressing and how we retrieve antiquities record them etc after that what happens is personal interest so we are only given in information in up to ma after that what we have you will pick up some books on uh, what we call uh, enhancing the enhancing your understand then you will automatically be specialized in certain areas early history medieval history late medieval history modern history post modern history like that there will be specializations that is the way in which people will um, become specialists and know and uh, aging age wale to sculptures how to understand kakatiya how to understand vijayanagara is very interesting very simple we can we go to a kakatiya temple study the architecture and art also inscriptions also then what happens the same style whenever we find in other areas automatically we attribute to the same style na we give the same date or bracket uh, within uh, 50 or 100 years change hello హలో హలో సార్ సార్ ఎస్ సార్ శ్రీదేవి శ్రీ నీరజ గారు ఫ్రమ్ ఉమన్ ఆవిడ ఇంకొక క్వశ్చన్ అడిగారు సార్ శ్రీదేవి గారు ప్లీజ్ గో హెడ్ భార్గవ్ గారు ఇప్పుడు నాకు వన్ డౌట్ ఇస్ ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ ఐఎమ్ ఫ్రమ్ నెల్లూర్ డిస్ట్రిక్ట్ if i want to know what are the historical places what are the heritages around nellore just to, for me to go and wow, see those places visit those places yes. where can i get those informations <coughs> yes one Any thing app is... from government or uh, something like that because google has limited information on also only famous places it is like this ma'am if we deposit heavy money uh, our bank balance will be heavy so it, <laughs> people have to volunteer to upload information on the net then we can get it uh, people have to take some interest otherwise yes now you have asked some interesting question uh, it is not applicable only to nellore for other districts and other areas also what happens is nowadays we we do not have what we call the prehistoric sites immediately go and see identify that is a difficult issue but uh, as far as medieval period onwards at least from 7th 8th century onwards we have got uh, historical information except one or two rock art sites are there in uh, nellore is rock art means um, prehistoric rock paintings are there dachuru uchur and that uh, some areas are there then after that what happens is you have more temple sites what are those temples if you go to muttukur in kottapatnam court area there is a temple muttukur there happened number of battles in historical context then your uh, ranganayaka swami temple the very significance of ranganayaka swami temple is that it was the owner of collective farming of more than 5 lakh acres it is known as what we call uh, it is a collective farm ka chitra meli bolke that is a, a corporate body which owns lakhs of acres and agriculture was collective there is an inscription on the temple itself like that what happens if we go to a temple that is one temple penchalkona temple then you also have uh, 
మెనీ టెంపుల్స్ పొదల పొదల కోరు కలువాయి సంగం ఆత్మ కోరు అలయనాథ స్వామి టెంపుల్ దెన్ దీస్ ఆర్ స్ప్రెడ్ అక్రాస్ మ్యామ్ మేజర్ థింగ్ ఈస్ దట్ వెరీ రీసెంట్లీ ఎన్ రూట్ టు శ్రీహరికోట ఫ్రమ్ నాయుడుపేట దేర్ వాస్ యాక్చువల్లీ ఏ ప్లేస్ కాల్డ్ గొట్టి ప్రోలు ఫ్రమ్ నో ఫ్రమ్ నాయుడుపేట టు మల్లా గొట్టి ప్రోలు ఎక్స్కేషన్స్ వర్ కండక్టెడ్ అండ్ శాతవాహన టూ థౌజండ్ ఇయర్స్ ఓల్డ్ సైట్ ఈస్ నౌ ఓపెన్ పీపుల్ నౌ కెన్ గో ఆర్క్ ఆర్కలాజికల్ మెటీరియల్ ఈజ్ నౌ ఆన్ డిస్ప్లే ఎక్స్కేషన్స్ ఆర్ ప్రోగ్రెసింగ్ దట్ ఈస్ వన్ థింగ్ వెరీ రేర్ బట్ ఆన్ ది అదర్ హ్యాండ్ యాజ్ ఐ సెడ్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద టెంపుల్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ ఓన్లీ వన్ ఫోర్టిఫికేషన్ అట్ ఉదయగిరి so it is very far away you have to take from kavali to udaygiri and go there and wonderful places are there some there are one or two saidapur is a jain jain site so what happens is as you said earlier if you browse or go to net there are no uh, what we call avenues to no information straight away if you go to archaeology department there are no people so what is the way out is that if we, whether we have to form small groups how people are posting in their facebook accounts etc whenever they visit a place they inquire about it and again go on writing some people will respond again the uh, information will be increasing and so i agree with you that i won and i am sorry that our department's uh, initiative is to keep each and everything though it is not protected by our department our marginal interest should be to provide or furnish information for the general public because our is a government department we cannot confine only to our monument even these are the places of interest for people it automatically generates interest then people will go there when people started visiting in large number the local community will involve in providing services employment will be generated like that no ma'am so that awareness we have to build from government side so voluntary organizations intact etc are there but they have got their own limitations of funds strength and people etc so as you said i also take note of it and uh, small small uh, groups are there in uh, nellur uh, nellur historical society is there ma'am i will request them at least to keep information updated on uh, in general websites etc if you want i can send you Uh, what are the important places to buy mail or whatever it may be thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you so much ma'am yes sir thank you sir so we thank dr reeman sivanagiri di sir for taking us a time travel and making the stones speak so a great professor a great intellectual a great um, knowledgeable person like sivanagiri uh, digari please remove all the adjectives <laughs> can make us can make us travel along the time and can make stone speak so people think that time traveling can happen only through scientific research but sevanagar edigar has proved that time travel is very much possible through social and historical research so really sir you have uh, taken us you have taken us across ages indeed uh, we are very joyful and uh, very proud of our intangible cultural heritage thank you uh, thank, thank you. you very much for for a spell bounding and spectacular session sir uh, sir has got a very hectic schedule so today he has got meeting with collector and many other meetings and he has got a very important evening at the 6 also ms is hectic schedule uh, he has taken a, a, taken away time in giving his valuable address so on behalf of the kl university fraternity chairman kl university president klf కోనే సత్యనారాయణ గారు అండ్ ద చైర్మన్ సురభి డాక్టర్ హబుల్లా ఖాన్ గారు కన్వీనర్ సురభి డాక్టర్ ఎం సుమన్ గారు వి థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ వి థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ ఫర్ యువర్ వెరీ వాల్యుబుల్ ప్రెసెన్స్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ ఫర్ ద ఆపర్చునిటీ గివెన్ టు మీ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఐ రియల్లీ ఎంజాయ్డ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్స్ టు ఆల్ ది ఆడియన్స్ అక్రాస్ ద వరల్డ్ ఫర్ వ్యూయింగ్ దిస్ వండర్ఫుల్ హిస్టరీ టాక్ సో వి విష్ హిస్టరీ లివ్స్ ఆన్ యాజ్ హెరిటేజ్ థ్యాంక్ యూ థ్యాంక్స్ నాట్ థ్యాంక్ యూ సో మచ్ థ్యాంక్ య